Oh, Vosh. Voshy, Voshy, Vosh. Darling, you shouldn't have 50 minutes all for me. You really know how to make a girl feel special. Though, darling, I will be honest, you could have been kinder and used a more flattering picture. You're not playing fair. That was a little naughty of you. It almost hurt my feelings. If anyone makes an expression like this at the camera at any point, it's legally okay to be sexist towards them. Oh, stop. What are you like? You're making me blush already. Gonna condescend to me? That's okay. I'm going to evoke several millennia of oppression against you. That's fair. I hear you, and fair enough. But let's not forget, I only condescended to you in the first place after you patronized women as a collective. Women be quieter and start apologizing with your precise words. Um, it wasn't me who started with the disrespect, but I suppose it's neither here nor there at this point. After your 50 minutes, we're definitely on pet names now. I'll call you darling, and you can call me what you like after that performance. Well, I say that. You've already taken the liberty. I believe bitch was your preferred term for me. Shut up, bitch. Not something I'd have chosen for myself, but hey, whatever gets you going. Stupid fucking bitch. Yes, everybody. You might recall that in my desecration of femininity video, I gave Vosh a special mention, using him as an example of that particular kind of male feminist who is actually just a massive misogynist. So Vosh, being an intelligent man, decided to do a response where he disproved my point? I'm going to evoke several millennia of oppression against you, stupid fucking bitch. Yeah, it was an interesting response, wasn't it, darling? In all seriousness, I do have to thank you for proving my point about you so thoroughly. I don't think some people quite understood what I meant when I talked about how a big chunk of male feminists despise femininity and are often the most appalling towards women. Far worse than almost any conservative guy I've ever come across, genuinely. Um, but you've so wonderfully demonstrated exactly the kind of behaviour I was talking about. You see, ladies and gentlemen, what I touched on in my last scripted video was that particular type of man I've had the misfortune to run into a few times. Men like this, weak men, I suppose we could call them, lack the balls to just admit how they really feel about women, so they hide, hide behind the label of feminist to be as sexist as they like, and then claim as a way to deflect criticism that they're doing it all in the name of women's rights. You know, I can at least appreciate the honesty of the old school misogynist, but this new breed where they try to camouflage themselves as something else is so slimy and underhand that it's really quite difficult to stomach. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've always found it difficult to respect cowards. Welcome back to the channel everyone, I am Galatea and this is Asis, my dearly departed. And today Vorsh has kindly volunteered to be the case study for why male feminists actually just really, really, really hate women. Oh, also he called me a groomer, so there's that. <laughs> disclaimer before we begin. I'm not talking about your everyday guy who calls himself a feminist because he believes that women should have equal rights, okay? I'm really talking about the activist types. The ones who shout the loudest and tell women, you will be liberated, goddammit, even if I have to mistreat you in order to do it. Those guys. Um, and this is not a video shitting on men either. This is by definitely not the majority of men that I'm talking about. But the rotten apples do exist and most of them seem to be calling themselves feminists these days. Um, so, disclaimer over? Good. Let's get into the video. So Vosh, I know you're a very serious intellectual man, far too important to waste much time on a frivolous little thing like me. And by frivolous I of course mean female, but don't you worry, we'll get to your issues with women later. For now Vosh, your rebuttals to my points. What went wrong, my love? I didn't expect much from you, I will be honest, so I'm shocked that I actually still managed to be disappointed. That's what she said. I was expecting something a little more hard-hitting than, um... I'm faking my accent? Her accent is such a performance? Oh yeah, her accent is 100% being put on for the sake of the video. Interesting angle, but I think we can work with it. So, um, apparently Vorsch doesn't believe in English people. I think he thinks we're a myth. You know, like unicorns or mermaids or honest male feminists. So, a bit of background, because apparently you need it. Far across the ocean, there's a place called Britain. You might have heard of us. We used to be quite big fish back in the day, did a lot of noteworthy things, big impact on world events. Actually quite an important place in terms of your own country's history. You should really look into it. And in Britain, there's a place called England. And in England, some people talk like this. Crazy, I know. 
yeah, I don't think she would sound like this if you talked to her, like, casually in real life. Okay, so I can tell you're still not getting it. For reference, here are some other British people you might have come across. I'm not, like, a voice expert, so I don't know for sure, but something about it feels like... I didn't want to have to play this card, but you brought it up. So if we're going there, I do have to point out that out of the two of us, I speak English with the correct pronunciation. It's our language. We make the rules. You're the one with the stupid accent, not me, you cheeky yank. I love Americans, you beautiful people. Yeah? You're simple folk, aren't you? I jest, I jest. Obviously, Vorsch knows about Britain because he seems to really hate us. Jesus. Yeah, thank you. He hates the British almost as much as he hates women, so I am two of his least favourite things. We do in fact hate British women. See, knowing how much Walsh despises my people only makes me want to be even more British. I, c I can feel it, I can feel it rising up. Suddenly I have the urge to go to America and stick a Union Jack in the soil, go to a 4th of July celebration dressed as St George, or to an American football game and start shouting that it's just rugby for pussies. <laughs> Loudly sing Rule Britannia during the national anthem, that sort of thing. <laughs> I didn't know I had it in me, but suddenly that old invader spirit is it's possessing me. <laughs> the British are coming, the British are coming. This, does this person think they're in James Bond? The Authentic Observer does sound like the kind of uh, video title. Ah, 007. I've been expecting you. <laughs> I liked that, that felt fun. Thank you, Vorsch, for having incorporated that into my intro. God, he's full of good ideas, isn't he? We meet again, Mr. Bond. <laughs> oh no, sorry, I'm doing your bit, aren't I? I'll be James Bond, you be the villain. Come on, Vorsch, let's do a bit of role play. Cheeky. Grab a cat, I know you have a cat, I've seen the cat. There's a cat, of course, of course. Of course he's a bloody cat person. Of course he is. Typical. Grab a cat, grab your cat though. Grab him by the pussy. Do the whole shebang. Go on, have a cheeky spin on your chair. Hit us with the, I've been expecting you. Go on, you know you want to. It's tiring work telling women to shut up on Twitter all day. Let your hair down for once, love. You deserve it. Ooh, put on an accent too. Let's see if your fake English accent is better than my fake English accent and people can judge who wins in the comments. <laughs> in all seriousness. Please, can you actually do it, Walsh? Humour me. Do the chair spin. I'll beg if you want me to. Please. <laughs> That is such a practice gesture. Like, I'm gonna slow this down. That's it, the game's up. I didn't want to have to tell you guys this, but I do in fact script my videos. I know, this is news to everyone. Like, it's a very, very, very practice gesture. This persona isn't, isn't even truly me. I try so hard to hide it, but ah, you can't fool Detective Vorsch. He's too clever for that. You can like break it down. There are like three lip curls, like, Two distinct head shakes, like... He knew something fishy was going on and he put together those clues to see through my clever disguise. Captain Shab. I deserve it. He's lying. He's Count Olaf. These aren't even real glasses. It's like at the end of Scooby-Doo when the villain is unmasked. Just as we thought. And I would have gotten away with it too. Impressive detective work, Walshie. Well done, mate. Can't pull one over on you. have seemed childish so far, but a good chunk of Vorsch's arguments, arguments being a generous word, involve picking apart my accent, my appearance, my outfit, and my persona, you know, all the things 12 year old girls go for when they're feeling particularly bitchy. So it's difficult to be serious when I'm not given anything serious to work with. And then, because apparently he really wanted to prove my point about male feminists, he said this. Ah, uh, she's a pick me. No wonder she's dressed like this. She's wearing a fucking skirt with stockings. She just wants to live in Mad Men and be sexually harassed by, like, the, the fucking... the office boys. I'm sorry? I beg your pardon, sir. What was that? What do I want? She just wants to live in Mad Men and be sexually harassed. Yes, Vorsch. You caught me. I just want to be sexually harassed. It's obvious from how I'm dressed. That's all I want. I'm a bit of a slut for unwanted advances. No wonder she's dressed like this. I can't believe I have the nerve. It's obscene. I'm practically flaunting myself with these nylons and this skirt. She's wearing a fucking skirt with stockings. Honestly, how dare I? Going around dressed like the whore I am. I'm just inviting trouble. I'm asking for it. I obviously want it. I'm begging for it. Like, you know, like just the short skirt plus like the, 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 
stockings and the so on. I'll tell you something else about me while we're on the topic. I found going through puberty so horrific and disgusting and shameful that for years afterwards I could hardly stand to be touched, even by members of my own family. I don't know why I was especially sensitive to this. I have, I have no idea. I was, though. Um, and for a long time, my littlest sister was the only person I could bear to hug. It was quite an issue. Made all that sexual harassment that happened as a teenager fuck with my head more than was reasonable, I think. And then there was that one time with a boy when things went a little further than just some playful sexual harassment, which of course only made everything worse. And then what used to happen to me when I was with a guy is that sometimes I would freeze up and not be able to move, and in my head there'd just be this loud, blind panic going around and around and around, but I couldn't even make myself speak. So what I used to do in my teens and early twenties to deal with that was get so blind drunk that I felt completely disconnected from my body and sometimes I had to do that to even be able to kiss a guy. But often not even the alcohol would stop the freezing up and the disgust and the panic. And then of course there was how sick I felt after someone touched me even if I wanted them to. But yes, Vorsch, you're right. I just want to be sexually harassed like the stupid bitch I am. Stupid fucking bitch. Maybe I should feel bad throwing all that at you after what was just a clumsy, shitty comment on your part. But I don't, because a main topic of the video you reacted to was about how suddenly being sexualized is so stressful and confusing as a teenage girl, how it made my skin crawl with disgust at my own body and made puberty really quite traumatic for myself and indeed many teenage girls, and then learning how to balance the hatred of that with wanting to celebrate femininity and beauty, with wanting to be attractive and not wanting to hide away, but you wouldn't know that, because in all your blinding arrogance, you barely watched more than five minutes of the video before deciding you could somehow speak on it and all my opinions. So actually, I think you deserved that. The other reason I don't feel bad for everything I just said is because I think your comment actually reveals a lot about you and your feelings and opinions towards women, female sexuality, and femininity. She just wants to live in Mad Men and be sexually harassed. Vosh. Okay, can you see why I think you and a lot of far-left blokes are genuine misogynists? Can you see how you're coming across? Because I'll tell you how I'm reading this. I make a video saying there is strength and power in femininity, and your response is to imply that because I value femininity, I don't respect myself and must be nothing more than a dumb slut who must want to be sexually harassed and degraded by men. I don't think that's an unfair interpretation of your attitude. I really don't. Seriously, how else am I supposed to read that? What else could you have possibly meant by that? Please explain. This just shows how little respect you have for femininity, which is quite sad, really. Vosh, I'm gonna explain something to you. And I know you don't like me, understatement, <laughs> but separate it out for a minute and, and listen to what I'm saying, because there are a lot of women who agree with me, so do them the courtesy of listening for their sake, not mine. Believing that women don't need to be like men in order to have value and believing it's okay for women to embrace being feminine does not make me or other women stupid bimbos who only want to be sexualized and are too stupid to see their own exploitation. Femininity does not equal weakness, stupidity or a desire to be degraded, no matter how much you might believe it does, Vosh. It doesn't mean we want it really, it doesn't mean we're looking to be harassed, and it certainly doesn't mean that all we want to do is serve men, no matter how much you might wish that was true. My brother and my sister's boyfriend are fairly conservative-leaning, the kind of guys Vorsch would probably call misogynists, um, and I've never seen them look so shocked as when they'd heard he'd said that. My sister's boyfriend's jaw hit the floor, he didn't shut his mouth for a while, was, his reaction was actually quite funny. But, but because they don't hate women, and they would never dream of saying anything like that to a woman, no matter how much they disliked her, that she wanted to be sexually harassed because of what she was wearing or her opinions. And according to Vorsch's worldview, they're supposed to be the sexist ones. They truly could not get their heads around how someone claiming to stand for women's rights could say something like that. I didn't find it that surprising, uh, because I've met men like this before, who claim to be feminists, but who really don't think much of women. I think there's a lot of disdain for femininity on the left, and I don't want to be harsh, but I find guys who have the, the, those sort of feelings towards femininity to be sorry excuses for men. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm being completely serious here. It's simultaneously aggressive and pathetic, and being around it feels, well, whatever the opposite of safe is. Ill at ease. 
you can sense the disdain for you rolling off them. You can, you just can. You can, you, you can feel this really nasty, angry undercurrent, and it's never surprising when they reveal themselves. Shut up, bitch. You want to have a conversation about toxic masculinity? I see it again and again in male feminists. For whatever my opinion is worth, in the simplest terms, from a female perspective, I would say that positive masculinity makes you feel safe, and toxic masculinity makes you feel threatened. I'm wearing my old school skirt there, by the way, in that video. Um, it looks a little shorter than it is because of the angle of this armchair, it kind of goes back a bit. But you see schoolgirls all over the country wearing skirts like that with those exact kind of tights, these exact kind of tights. And teen girls are notorious for rolling up their school skirts to be shorter, to make them fashionable and trendy. Um, so I'm just wondering if 13 year old girls also want to be sexually harassed when they're in their school uniforms, Wash. Genuine question. The ridiculous thing is, I'm not even dressed that revealingly. Unless you're an insanely conservative fundamentalist Christian. I don't, thank you. It's really not that inappropriate. Um, I'm wearing the same thing millions of women who work in an office would wear. You could wear what I'm wearing in a professional scenario and it wouldn't be seen as wildly inappropriate. All you professional ladies better make sure your skirts are down to your ankles, otherwise you want to be sexually harassed in the workplace. That's what Vorsch says, because apparently Vorsch is a caricature of a 1970s misogynist. She just wants to live in Mad Men and be sexually harassed by like the, the fucking, the office boys. I had no idea you had such Puritan sensibilities, Vorsch. How very conservative of you. So typical of your kind to twist the truth, to cloud the mind with unholy thoughts. Vorsch confirmed fundamentalist Christian. <laughs> well, she was a whore anyway. New member of the Westboro Baptist Church. What I'm wearing will send me to hell like the whore I am. You really kind of have to think about what a whore is. Now that will be a plot twist. Vorsch joins the Westboro Baptist Church. I'd love it if things went that way. That would be a hilarious end to the story. If you wear a dress that's strapless with a brassiere that isn't, you might be a slut. <laughs> Go on, Vorsch. Join them for a laugh. See if they let you in. Double dare you. I'll do it if you do. Who would they hate more, you or me? Now that's an interesting question. You're a far left nutter, but I wear short skirts and I'm into crystals. Who's more damned? Okay, tangent. Sorry, Vorshi, I'm forgetting my manners. Let's get back to the video. Where were we? Oh yes, inappropriate attire. Hang on while I've got you here. I've got a bit of a list, yeah? I'm ready. I'm ready to learn, Vorsh. I'm... I'm ready to be educated. You teach me how I can be a strong, truly strong, empowered woman. How, how do I throw off the shackles of the patriarchy, Vorsh? Um, you know, because you're so good at that. We'll go through this. You, you tell me how I'd be a good little feminist. Um, so, my list, shorts. What do we think about how shorts? What do you think about shorts? What's the verdict on shorts? They, they do show off a lot of leg shorts. Am I asking to be sexually harassed if, if I'm wearing the shorts. You really kind of have to think about what a whore is. And low cut tops? What, 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 what about low cut tops? Am I a slut who deserves it if I'm wearing a low cut top? What about this one? But there's, you can see a bit of clavicle in this one. Now that's very sexual, the clavicle. No man can control himself when he sees a bit of clavicle. Ooh, very spicy. She's wearing a fucking skirt with stockings. And the yoga leggings, that's the next thing. What are we thinking? What do we think of the yoga? No, they're very tight, the yoga leggings. Should I maybe stay away from the yoga leggings if I don't want to be assaulted? Would that be your professional advice? What about a swimsuit? Oh, that's all that I can see. I see several problems here with the swimsuit. Yeah, I oh know, I see what you mean. If, you know, if that's too provocative, next time I go swimming, I could just go full, full wetsuit. In fact, actually, if you could just send over a list, that'd be great, love. Just send me a list, yeah? Of all the of all the Vorsch approved female garments that are appropriate to wear, that would be really helpful. Or sorry, a sheet. Okay. If that would make you feel less filled with irrational rage, darling, I could I could just yeah, I'll wear a sheet and be done with it. Stupid fucking bitch. Oh, I'm sorry, Vorsch, but I mean really, you did you did just you deserved me messing around like that. You deserve to be wound up for that. Don't be so bloody ridiculous. No wonder she's dressed like this. She's wearing a fucking skirt with stockings. She just wants to live in Mad Men and be sexually harassed by, like, the, the fucking... the office boys. Behold, a feminist, noble defender of women's rights to dignity, safety, and autonomy over their own bodies. 
Well, as long as you agree with him. If there was ever a case for tyrannical toxic masculinity, submit to Vorsch's worldview, or the rules of feminism need not apply. You're probably just a slut who wants to be sexually harassed anyway. Right, Vorsch. Vorschy, Vorschy, Vorsch. Come on, you're gonna have to you, explain this to me. Isn't saying that like a cardinal sin on the left? Isn't that like what, the, the, like the worst thing you can do? I, I don't know, you tell me. This is you your crowd. What was she wearing and all that? Isn't that, isn't that, you know, what the slut walks are all about? Isn't that that whole thing? A short skirt's not an invitation. What happened to that? Why don't I get that kind of treatment, Borsh? That's not fair. Or am I, uh, I'm, I'm fair game now beca because I have, not even right wing, just, I'm just fucking centrist-ish politics, so normal rules need not apply. Okay. I really must thank you for demonstrating my point, Borsch. Male feminists only care about the ideology and not about actual women, and they will actively attack women if they're a threat to that ideology, getting a kick out of being as misogynistic as they like to those women they've deemed heretics. It's about power, not progress. And if you're a far-left woman, screw you. Get sexually harassed and cry about it, I guess. You probably wanted it anyway. You're not a progressive, Vorsch. You're not. You can't call yourself that. It's ridiculous. Come on. Be honest. Just be honest. It's just about power. It's obviously just about power. I don't know. That's just from where I'm sitting. That's, that's what it looks like. Anyway, I hope this explained to everyone why I find a lot of male feminists uh, creepy. I'm sorry, Vorsch. That was rude of me. But if you don't want to be called creepy, maybe don't say that I want to be sexually harassed. I feel like that's fair. Is that fair? That's fair. Like, you know, like just the short skirt plus like the, the, the stockings and the so on. Speaking of Vorsch not really caring about what happens to women who disagree with him, um, let's talk about Sydney Watson. I mentioned her in my first video as the woman Vorsch listened to tearfully talk about her assault and then he immediately responded with, bullshit, that didn't happen. Um, a reaction which seems a little opposed to his politics. I should clarify, I'll be fair to Vorsch, I don't want to give the impression that they were like in-person talking, he was reacting to a video of her. So it was, it was my opinion this reaction of his was due to Sydney having right-wing political beliefs. This, this was my opinion, um, an opinion that has only been strengthened after what he just said about me. It seems women only matter if they agree with his worldview, but Vorsch took issue with this. He had a, he had a problem with how I viewed this, um, and I'm glad he brought it up because there were some things I wanted to say. So, firstly, I've, I'd already seen the video of him, he like clarified that that's not what he said and he, he explained himself and blah. I'd already seen the video, before I did my first video, I had looked up on this, I'd already seen the video of him trying to explain himself after he'd said that about Sydney. So he did a follow-up video where he was like, no, this is, this is why. So I already knew what his supposed defence was, and right off the bat I would just like to say that, in my opinion, it just to me, just seemed like the most transparent attempt at backtracking and scrambling for a reasonable excuse I've ever seen. Secondly, Vorsch, I'm going to tell you now, you're actually factually incorrect. I'll tell you why. So, also, I also I just want to add, in his video, Vorsch actually thought that I was arguing that we should always believe all women, regardless of evidence and circumstance, which is not my position, but again, he didn't actually listen to what I'd said before formulating an, an opinion and going off on a tangent about it. But anyway, that's kind of beside the point. Oh. And in the video you did on me, Borsch, you continued to mock Sydney by imitating her crying about it. That was really quite disgusting. No, no, yeah, like, like, ba like, basically, it's you, you know that like trope in 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 stories where a person is like telling a really sad story, and then like they're getting near the end, and they're like, th then they're starting to talk about how they have like an investment opportunity for you. You know what I mean? Like, and I can't afford to have my 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 little cat whiskers go to the vet. Thankfully, I have a little timeshare off in, you know, Aruba that I'm looking to get off my hands and I was wondering, like, you know, like instantly your alarm bells ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, mate, you're better than that. So, Sydney claimed the police refused to investigate her assault because the guy was from a certain religion. I think those are her words, her words or something like that. Um, to which you, Vorsch, said that she was obviously lying and this couldn't possibly be true because, according to you... Now, it's a little weird when everyone's talking about their rape experiences, and then one person says, oh, well, uh, well, my, my person, he wasn't white, and, well, um, because of his religion, the police said that the cultural differences mean they wouldn't prosecute him? Um, I don't 
think this is something that most of the viewers of this channel need reminding of, but I really don't think there's a habit of police officers failing to investigate the sexual assault or rape of white women by non-white people. Now, it is not statistically impossible that everything she said happened did happen, that the police actually said, we won't investigate because of cultural differences. I can't, I can't fathom a police officer making that claim. Can you imagine that? Like, hey, I'm a white woman. I was, I was sexually assaulted by a, by a brown person. Oh, well, okay, we won't investigate it, though, because they're Muslim. We won't do that, though. Vosh, it's amazing how wrong you are. A quick Google search would show you how wrong you are. So I don't know if you're dishonest, or if you've just never heard of the grooming gang scandals, um, but I'll treat this like you've never heard of them, okay? Because everything you just said has, yes, literally happened, provably, on a massive scale in Britain. I have no idea what things are like in America, Sydney Watson's Australian for a start, um, and I don't know where in the world she was when this happened. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that what you just said, that the police would never not investigate a white woman's assault if the perpetrator was a Muslim, is mind-blowingly incorrect. And all you Americans, hold on to your horses. Hang on, hold on, bear with me, okay? Calm down and listen to me for a minute. What I'm going to say is not a conspiracy theory or something only right-wingers believe. I need you to understand that this is common knowledge, a widely accepted fact in Britain, and this has been widely known about for about a decade now. I was at school when this scandal broke, and I remember it dominating the news for a very long time. This is a fact, not a wacky fringe theory, and a fact that the police admit to. So in Rotherham, in Yorkshire, which is a town, a conservative estimate is that over 1,500 girls were abused between 1997 and 2013. This happened in my county, in Yorkshire, just an hour and a half down the road from where I am now. The police knew about this the whole time it was going on, but they never did anything to stop it. Do you know why they never did anything to stop it? The police never properly investigated or did anything because most of the perpetrators were from, in Sydney's words, a certain religion, and the police didn't want to exacerbate racial tensions. The police themselves, and politicians, now admit this. So yes, Vosch, the police would actually just come out and say that they won't investigate because of cultural differences. Some of those girls were as young as 11 years old, beaten and raped by multiple men. Sometimes they doused them in petrol and threatened to set them on fire. I know you don't care what happens to rich women, but even you should care about this, Vosh, because these were not middle-class girls. These were the most vulnerable girls in society. Many of these girls were in and out of care homes. Girls from abusive homes. Girls from the most deprived backgrounds who had nobody to protect them, or defend them, or care about them. Girls who jumped at the first opportunity of what they thought was genuine affection. Girls in the perfect position to be manipulated, taken advantage of, and then raped. Passed around multiple men. You want to talk about grooming? The police failed those girls in every possible way. To say they neglected their duty of care is an understatement so vast it is insulting. South Yorkshire police are an absolute disgrace and have no right to ever again claim they protect or defend anyone. At the time, the police said that these girls were prostitutes making lifestyle choices. As we all know, there's no such thing as an 11-year-old prostitute, but there are 11-year-old rape victims. You'd think the police would know that. Apparently not. Yeah, she she literally said the cops said they wouldn't investigate because of cultural differences. Like, oh yeah, dude, that's something cops love to do. Cops love to not investigate Muslims sexually assaulting white women because of the cultural differences of... Yeah, no, I don't, yeah. 1,500 girls. 1,500. In one town. Not city, town. Just down the road. Just down the road. Um, and Rother Rotherham's not the only example of this, by the way. So, I have no idea if what Sydney said happened to her happened. I don't know her, um, and I don't know much about her, though she seems genuine, and I'm inclined to believe her, but your ignorant statement that she had to be lying about the police not investigating due to the religion of the perpetrator, because apparently the police would literally never refuse to investigate the assault of a white woman if the perpetrator was Muslim, is flat out wrong. Provably wrong. Amazingly, arrogantly, ridiculously wrong. 
Maybe that's true in America. But it's happened before in Europe. It's well documented. It's an accepted fact and one admitted to by those involved. And this this upper middle class like British affect right here, this thing that she's doing, I think I speak for most of you, at least a lot of you, when I say that this aesthetic, this behavior, this um, attitude is contemptible. This posh bullshit is insufferable. Like it's actually not even like in a political sense. It's just everything about it exudes arrogance and condescension and classist elitism. Um, in a in, in in a way that I think most people f find very very off putting, yeah, existentially revolting. Right. Remember when I told you guys that sometimes the accent made people mad? Yeah. So this is what I was talking about. Rare that it meets this level of vitriolic hatred, but Vought has a lot of feelings, and we must create a space for him to safely express those feelings. So, I'm elitist and condescending. All right. I would, however invite the audience to imagine the levels of arrogance required to watch only a few random snippets of someone's video and then actually thinking you understood their arguments and could speak about it for 50 minutes. It does sound like the kind of video, like, like channel name that you would have for a person with a very high opinion of themselves. While we're on the topic of those who have high opinions of themselves, what might we call someone who made a video debunking someone else and spent most of the time not engaging with or even watching any actual arguments, but instead masturbating their own ego, lazily playing a few random clips and then using them to go off on massive tangents in a blatant and clumsy attempt to flaunt their own intellect rather than say anything of value? I can think of a few words. Vorsch got very personal about my general demeanour and how off-putting he found it, so I suppose it's only fair I return the favour. Um, he's got this really self-important way of speaking, like he clearly thinks the things he's saying are intelligent, but everything he says is so ill-informed, like, it, it honestly made me laugh out loud several times. It was like watching someone fight thin air, debunking things I'd never said, arguing against this phantom of what he imagined I believed. I don't feel any to watch from the beginning because I have no respect for this woman. Oh darling, I don't think we're in any danger of any woman expecting respect when it comes to you. I think that ship sailed a long time ago. But how about watching it not because you respect me, how about watching the whole video so you don't make a tit of yourself? Is that a good enough reason? I don't respect you, but I still thought it best to listen to everything you had to say before giving my opinion on it. It was embarrassing to watch. All he did was skip around my video, watching the odd little section here and there, and then coming up with whole arguments against something I didn't believe. Um, and then for some reason he acted all confused and put on this condescending self-important air of this woman is not making any sense. This is so dumb. I unironically don't even understand what she's trying to say. Acting like his lack of understanding was my failure to make a good point. I wouldn't understand someone's argument either, for she, if I watched a few out-of-context sentences from an almost an hour-long video. Why on earth would you expect to? Well, you didn't expect to. You did it intentionally, didn't you? Knowing that you wouldn't have to understand or engage because you're a dishonest person. I think I pricked your substantial ego when I insulted you in my last video, and I think that this response of yours was a spiteful attempt to embarrass me, because how very dare I have a go at you. I also think the fact it was a woman doing it actually really got under your skin. Shut up, bitch. I'm not a fan of his, if you couldn't tell. Um, so someone else will have to tell me if this sort of response is a normal thing for him. Surely he's not always this ill-informed and lazy, not with the large following he has. How, how, would, how would anyone take anything he says seriously, if this is like a, a regular okay, occurrence for him? I don't know. Why, why do people watch him? He'd be bleeding brain cells all over the place. Surely, surely he's more impressive than this most of the time, is what I'm trying to say in this video. Surely, surely there's got to be some reason for his huge success. He can't be like this all the time and have gotten there. Surely not. Yeah, so I actually, I don't actually need to come up with any counter arguments to Vorsch's points, um, because, okay, they're relevant to everything. How about I just play some clips of what he thought I believed, and those of you who actually watch my video can tell me if this is my position. What is the difference between her perspective here and like an 1800s misogynist father who believes women should be pure and dainty and untarnished? Um but the, like the purity of women is ruined by battle. That was a, that's a 
long held position to this day and has been for millennia the idea that women represent some kind of like maternal purity that gets sullied by things like enterprise, commerce, and warfare. That's like a pretty common misogynistic belief that like women should be kept barefoot and pregnant because the, you know, the rigors of the general world are too much for their pure souls and that women who partake in these things are tainted and that makes them worse mothers and wives. Is that not a common, like this is, this isn't just like modern misogyny. This is like old school misogyny coming from her. This gives me 50s housewife feminism energy. Yeah, you can go back and look at like house, like like home shopping catalogs from the 50s where they talk about like the new woman, you know? You don't have to be a little pushover just because that's what the fella says, you know? You can be a strong woman of your own. Here, get your own dishwasher. Uh, with this dishwasher, you'll have more time to spend with the gals. Don't even care what the hubby thinks, you know? Like, some shit like that, you know? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? I can't, I can't ad-lib this. But it's like a... It's, it's like this very, 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 like, thin appeal to progressivism and women's strength, while mostly just being about reaffirming the, the pre-existing gender roles, yeah. What's the verdict, guys? Does that sound like what I believe? Or is it a total warping of what I was saying from someone who, again, didn't watch it? Yeah, Mulan was too trans. The guys, she's not a feminist. She wants women to be women and men to be men. Um, she wouldn't like Mulan because Mulan was like a defiance of traditional gender roles. Now this should really demonstrate to everyone how little he understands my opinions on women. We've talked about Mulan before, guys. We even had a bit of a Mulan scandal on this channel. Um, yeah, I've mentioned several times how I think Mulan is a wonderful example of a strong female character how I admire her bravery and love the story, and I think she's a brilliant way to portray a female warrior. The old Mulan, not the new Mulan. She's one of my favourite Disney princesses, in fact. A fantastic example of female strength. Because I actually don't have an issue with female fighters, which again, Vorsch, you would know if you watched the video. You took one look at how I was dressed and heard me say I value femininity, and then immediately assumed I was an extremely conservative right-wing type who thinks women have to be one specific way, and that one way is to be only be mothers and wives. You're so far off on what you think my opinions are, it's laughable. You have actually decided that because I am wearing a short skirt and tights, I must hold all the opinions of a Stepford wife. I hope your normal political analysis has a little bit more depth and intelligence to it than that. Because if not, that's pretty disappointing. Vorsch also thought, because he skipped to the end without watching the video, that when I talked about femininity being able to grow and sustain life, that I was referring only to pregnancy, and took from that that that's all I thought women were good for, and also that I was grooming teenage girls. Imme grow and sustain life, immediately talking about biological reproduction while addressing, by her admission, teenage girls. The literal uh, grooming, yeah. Vosh, seriously, this is embarrassing. If you'd watched the video, you'd understand I was talking about the symbolic meaning of femininity. How I also mentioned, by the way, how men could have those qualities too. That went right over your head because what you took from the video was this. She wants women to be women and men to be men. Okay, and now we're on to the Lord of the Rings. I think this girl might be a fake fan. Why did you assume I hadn't read the book, Vorshi? That's... Very interesting. It's not... It's not because I'm female, is it? Surely such a noble defender of women like yourself would never have assumed a young woman was faking a passion for something typically seen as a male area of interest. You didn't think I was pretending to be interested in the Lord of the Rings just to get attention from men, did you? I can't help getting the feeling you wouldn't have said that about a bloke. I think, my darling, that you just committed what all the cool kids are calling a microaggression these days. Now that's very naughty. Bought in defense of the Motherkin and Feanor, escaped the sack of Doria, host Christ. Okay, this is some nerd ass shit. Okay, she she fights a lot. Okay, so yeah, now we're on to Galadriel. So thing is, Vorsh, I actually addressed this point at the beginning of my video, which again is one of the parts you didn't watch. If you had watched the whole video, you would know I am well aware that Tolkien refers to Galadriel as athletic and strong. I love the Lord of the Rings, 
But I admit I'm no great expert on the greater lore, however there is actually, from what I can see, some debate amongst hardcore fans about what Tolkien meant when he was talking about Gladriel. References to her fighting are vague, and people seem to be endlessly arguing about exactly how she fought, how much, and whether he meant physically or not, because that doesn't seem to be so clear. Everyone seems to have a different opinion and interpretation of that. Interpreting Galadriel as being a physical fighter in her youth is not necessarily a wrong interpretation, and I even stated in my video that I could be completely wrong. That Amazon might have handled Galadriel's character with care, that they might have respected Tolkien's law and made her a believable female character who is good at fighting. Here's why I doubted this though. The fact that they've decided to give us this incarnation of Galadriel at a time and as part of a greater trend of so many female characters being masculinized is why I was suspicious. This, and also what the show's creators were saying about her, made me think it was likely we would not be seeing a rounded and believable warrior Galadriel who was still allowed to be feminine, but instead we'd be seeing just another hashtag strong female character who just likes to beat people up and is strong just because of that. It seemed to be gearing up to be a case of this Galadriel better than old Galadriel because this one has a sword, and yes, I did find that insulting. I definitely could have been clearer on that, you're right. Not that it would have mattered if I had because you didn't watch the video anyway. But that's actually sort of beside the point. Despite the thumbnail, the main point of my video wasn't about Gladriel. I used her as a springboard to talk about the value and meaning of femininity and why I find it insulting that people keep taking on traditionally feminine characters and lazily making them just good at fighting, as if being feminine is not strong enough on its own. But then, you don't think it is, do you? How is her fighting in a war tearing away what makes her powerful? Isn't that a demonstration of what makes her powerful? Ah, uh, she's a pick me. No wonder she's dressed like this. Pick me, Vosh, please. Vosh, won't you pick me? In fact, this whole video response was an attempt to get your attention. Because, as we've established, I'll take any kind of attention from men. So please, Vosh, pick me. Shut up, bitch. Do you guys think I have a chance with him? Stupid fucking bitch. I think he likes me. Existentially revolting. So here, Vosh has done exactly what I was talking about in my last video. I must only value femininity because I'm desperate for male attention. As the feminist chicks like to say, not everything we do revolves around men. It's not all about you, Vosh. It couldn't possibly be because I value women. God, don't be so ridiculous. What could there be to value about women? There's nothing good about women, which is why we have to make them more like men. No, it must really be because I'm, I'm dying for male validation. What other reason could there possibly be for finding any value in femininity? And I'm the sexist. The lack of self-awareness is amazing. Do you guys remember when I said that the men who condescend to me the most are male feminists? Remember when I said they are the most likely to treat outwardly appearing feminine women as frivolous or stupid or weak or gullible? The most likely to dismiss them? Remember that? Uh, she's a pick me. No wonder she's dressed like this. I don't want to value femininity because I want to be empowered or independent. Silly bimbo like me, no. I just want to be sexually harassed. She just wants to live in Mad Men and be sexually harassed. And then Vosh yet again decided to parody a 1970s misogynist and say this. Lady, if you want to have kids so bad, get fucked and pop some out. Goodness me, he's right. Look at me thinking I could give my opinions on serious topics. No, I just need to shut my mouth and have a few kids. Stick to what I'm good at. This is such, like, I wish I was a mother but aren't for some reason energy. That's clearly all I want, and the only reason I'm even talking about femininity in the first place. My poor, neurotic and hormonal female brain is out of control, baby mad. And just needs a couple of kids to calm it down. Then maybe I'd get off the internet and keep my mouth shut, know my place, that sort of thing. Maybe if she inflicts her motherhood on some actual children, she can leave the channel alone. And poor Vorsh wouldn't have to witness such an obscene feminine display. He finds it quite disgusting. To get, have kids or something. I'm only good for babies. Imagine thinking I could be taken seriously when wearing a skirt. She's wearing a fucking skirt with stockings. You don't help yourself, Vosh. You really don't. The reason I mentioned you in my last video was as an example of a man who claims to be progressive, but who in reality is just incredibly disdainful of women, and you've proved me right at every turn. I'm actually kind of shocked by just how much you're proving it. I'd have at least thought you'd have the sense to pretend to hold back a bit if you were gonna respond. But apparently you don't. Yes, Vosh, I do want to be a mother. I still want to work, but I also want to be a mother. 
Why are you saying that like it's an insult and makes me deserving of disdain? Why do you see that as degrading? Is it because you see something in femininity as inherently degrading? Personally, I'm of the opinion that being a mother is one of, if not the most important and brave things a human being can do, but if it makes you feel better to take your mummy issues out on all women, then go for it, I guess. Also, isn't the definition of a pick-me putting down other women to raise yourself up? I'm getting pretty tired of saying this, but if you watch the video, I made it clear several times that I value all women, no matter how masculine or feminine, that I include all kinds of women in what I'm saying, and that I considered masculine women just as valid, because they are. I think my video was incredibly supportive of women. The proof of that is the overwhelming number of comments and messages I got from women and girls, from very feminine to very masculine, teens to older women, very far left women to traditional conservative Christian women, a lot of women and girls across the board who generally seem to agree my video spoke to them, resonated with them, and put to words their experience, because there is something shared in the female experience, no matter how feminine or not a woman is. For some of them, they said it made them not feel so worthless or weak or pathetic for being feminine, helped them appreciate the innate value in themselves, and there were a few teenagers who had no idea that the feelings I was describing were fairly common female experiences, and it made them feel like perhaps they weren't complete aliens in their own bodies. But I'm so sorry it didn't live up to your high standards of feminism, Vorsch. Sorry it didn't validate you, or speak to you, or even apparently make sense to you, because you didn't watch it, but the video wasn't for you. It was for women and girls. You know, the people feminism's supposed to be about. My points about the strength in femininity just, just went way over his head. Mainly because he didn't listen to any of my points, and all he seemed to take away from the video was that I wanted to go back to the 1950s, get sexually harassed, and, oh yes, how did he put it? Get fucked and pop some out. So yes, apparently now I'm a groomer. The literal uh, grooming. Vorsch says so, and I guess he would know. Telling young girls it's okay to be comfortable with their femininity and not hate themselves for it is grooming now. Sorry guys, I don't make the rules. Vorsch knows all about how it feels to be a young girl struggling with your femininity. He knows all about how those feelings can follow women into adulthood and completely screw with their identity. He knows how it feels to be at war with your own body in that way, to feel worthless or valueless or pathetic because you're feminine. Remember guys, if there's one thing we've learned, it's that Vorsch's omniscience is to be trusted. Vorschy Vorsch, this might be hard for you to believe because I know you've stated several times you don't care about anyone and from the sounds of it, I'm pretty sure you're dead inside. But it is actually possible to genuinely care about other human beings. I care a lot about women and girls. Not everyone has shitty ulterior motives, Vorsch. I love my little sister very much and I also remember what it was like to be a teenager. So yes, I do care about teenage girls and their experiences and it's, it is a totally wholesome and genuine concern for them, but thank you for trying to make it weird, you absolute cabbage. Yes, darling, if you address teenage girls about the experience of being in a female body, it would be weird, correct, but I'm not a slightly creepy older bloke. I know you're not great with nuance, but, but are we seeing why this might be different? I'm also not sure how intelligent it is to accuse someone of something that you yourself seem far more likely to be guilty of. Are you picking up on my meaning? I think even those who intensely dislike me would agree that, though I have many flaws, hard to believe, darling, I know, but nobody's perfect. Though I have many flaws, Coming across as creepy with children is not one of them. It's just not, is it? Now, now you, on the other hand... I don't think that's a sensitive way to say this, darling, so I'll just use my brother's words. He said you look like a sweaty nonce, love. I obviously totally disavow. It was very rude, it was very rude of him. I'm terribly insensitive, but... Well... To phrase it another way, for any parents in the audience, me or Vorsch, who are you letting babysit? I know it's a tough one, but if you had to choose. Take a minute to think about it. Difficult question. Um, who's spending the evening with your teenage daughter? Please, uh, please, right now, uncuck your dumb shit lib cuck fucking SJW brains and recognize this empirically correct fact that I am about to spit. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. That is... Possible. The literal uh, grooming. Have I made my point? I think I've made my point. 
don't accuse people of grooming when they seem far less like a groomer than you and have also never said creepy things about kids. Good rule of thumb, words to live by. Have that free advice, love. I'm so tired of the Professor Flowers bullshit, but I especially fucking hate it when it comes from women, especially white upper middle class women. Because you know for a goddamn fact that this bitch has it better than like 99.9999. Is that dirty talk from you, Vorsch? I think it might be. Go on, call me a filthy capitalist again, baby. Okay, so I feel pushed to talk about this because he made such a massive song and dance about it, and so did his followers. Um, I think there were several variations of posh tough bitch from, from them, um, which very progressive of you boys, thank you. I never even mentioned trans people in that video for a start, only making me agree more with the argument that turf is now just a misogynistic insult extreme left-wingers have taken to throwing at women they disagree with to get them to shut up. Call me a turf then if you want. I don't care. None of the words you use mean anything anymore anyway. Call me a Nazi for good measure because why the fuck not? You have made everything meaningless and nothing matters. Go wild. So, due to Vorsch's little rant about my incredibly privileged upper middle class life, a few of his followers also thought they would let me know that, as an upper middle class girl who could not conceive of the struggles of ordinary women, um, apparently, what right did I have to speak about femininity and feminism? I don't know why you guys think by that logic that Vorsch has more of a right to speak on it than me, but okay. What do I know about the struggles of ordinary people, you ask? Does growing up not knowing if you could afford enough food for the week count? I grew up with no kind of security. My parents regularly couldn't afford to buy food. Um, one of my greatest fears as a kid was being separated from my younger siblings if we ended up without a roof over our heads, and for a while we were on government benefits. You know, like most upper middle class people. I know I don't give off that kind of vibe. <laughs> I was blessed with a fantastic education. Um, but maybe you guys shouldn't make assumptions about the entire life story of someone you don't know. Because the fact is, you don't know. I don't even disagree with him. Like, I do consider myself incredibly lucky and privileged. I'm not denying that. I feel very blessed. But what I'm not going to do is let Vorsch, with his cushy YouTube gig and immense success, sit there smug as you like and have the absolute gall to lecture me about privilege and the struggles of ordinary people like I'm the one who's out of touch. I think, I think back to 2021, okay? A time period during which my channel made entirely too much money. And I don't remember a single ad oh, Come on, man. This wasn't entirely too much. Really. Entirely was too it? much. No. Doing all right for YouTube, are we, Bush? How much are you making? A lot more than me, I bet. Are, are you... Are, are you are you rich, Vosh? Nice. What's that like? How much... How, right, how... How... How much money... How... How... Uh, ounce, how much money do you have right now in your wallet? Is it enough... Enough to buy a pony? Could you buy a pony, Vosh? Could you... Could you buy a snazzy car with the money in your bank account? I... I could tell... I could tell you... I could tell you how much money is in my bank account, but the answer would only make me depressed. It's much more fun to talk about how much money you have. You've got to let me know how all that privilege feels. It looks like it's fun. I bet it's fun. Is it fun? I'm glad you're having fun, Vorshi. If you're happy, I'm happy. JK Rowling's in the same position. She lives in a fucking castle. You think I'm in the same position as JK Rowling? I fucking wish. You are ridiculous, mate. Oh, I wouldn't be on YouTube if I was. I'd have fucked off to some private island somewhere. Is that just because we both have similar English accents? Okay. I don't even live in a building at the moment. Um, but please, tell me more about my castle. It sounds bloody marvellous. Does it have a moat? I would like a moat. At least give me a moat. So after I filmed this video, I discovered that apparently Vorsch is a Beverly Hills rich kid. Well, Vorshi, now isn't this an interesting turn of events? You grew up rich, and I grew up on government benefits. This posh bullshit is insufferable. Oh, you brave little soldier. What a hero, fighting the good fight. Tell me again how contemptibly upper middle class I am. This upper middle class, like, British affect right here, this thing that she's doing, everything about it exudes arrogance and condescension and classist elitism. Go on, mate, have another go about my accent. You must have some more things to say. I'd love to hear them. Tell me how condescending and classist I sound. You might have to shout loudly though, love, so I can hear you from all the way up there on the Hollywood Hills. Do you know for a goddamn fact that this bitch has it better 
than like 99 point. God, I actually can't believe this after your little tantrum about how elitist I was. You'd think you'd raise yourself alone on the streets living on bin juice the way you carried on, wailing like a Dickensian orphan with that little faux outrage dramatic performance. But it turns out your upbringing was less Oliver Twist and more Gossip Girl. I don't know how you have the nerve to be disgusted at anyone for being obnoxiously upper middle class. Don't take out your weird self-hating socialist rich kid guilt on me, though I do have a suggestion for how you can deal with it, darling, and I really think this might solve your problems, but you'll have to follow my instructions exactly. I'll tell you what I want you to do, Vorshi boy, and listen really carefully. I want you to take all your moral superiority, all your talk about privilege, all your posturing and your posing, all your faux concern, all your sneering and your god complex about being the saviour of the common man. I want you to take all of that, Vorshi, yeah? Are you with me so far? I want you to take all of that and I want you to shove it right up your ass, you whiny little rich boy. How dare you lecture me? Also, why is it difficult to imagine why all women, even well-off women, yes, even JK Rowling, would care about women's issues and femininity? A very dear friend of mine is from a very wealthy family, um, and it still didn't protect her from getting sexually assaulted. Does she not have a leg to stand on then when it comes to feminism and talking about women's issues because she's an upper-class white girl? Does she have to keep her mouth shut about issues that affect women because, what, a certain income bracket makes you not a woman anymore and therefore immune to the negatives of the female experience? And of course, some women still have it harder than others. Of course that's true. But women's issues still affect all women. And how about me? Why am I so concerned with talking about the value of femininity? What, what, why would I want women to feel that they had their own innate strengths? What reason could I have for saying embracing their femininity didn't make them weak? That being feminine did not make them worthless or pathetic? I don't know, could it be because there's a lot of women and girls I admire and love who felt devalued, powerless, abused, targeted, exploited, humiliated, silenced or made to feel worthless because of their femininity? And I'm of the opinion that they actually shouldn't feel that way. Just one example, picking at random. Let's take my aunt as a case study, almost beaten to death several times by her first husband, culminating in him trying to shoot her and my then two-year-old severely autistic cousin before doing everyone a favour and putting a bullet in his own brain. But goodness me, why would I be concerned with women's issues and defending women and wanting women to know their value, golly gosh, maybe it's because I'm just a lazy entitled brat who wants to wear pretty dresses um, and just be taken care of because after all, what does a silly, naive, spoiled girl like me know of the big bad world safe up here in my ivory tower? There's this really disgusting attitude that Vorsch and many of his followers seem to have, which I've recently been on the receiving end of, that women they perceive to be of a certain social class or above a certain income bracket don't deserve any of the benefits of feminism. Like him saying he doesn't care about JK Rowling's abuse because she's a billionaire. Well off women still get assaulted, they're still women, like my friend I mentioned. The weird attitude of these women don't really know what it's like to be women so should shut the fuck up like the privileged snooty bitches they are is actually a really creepy attitude. It's got the same energy to it as those really aggressive blokes who think women deserve to be knocked down a peg or two. Those guys who kind of want to see women degraded, who think maybe they should be roughed up a bit. Excuse you, gentlemen. Feminism is supposed to be for all women, regardless of class, race, age, or appearance. You don't get to corner off a section of women it's okay to take your anger out on because you think they've had it too easy and you resent them for it. If that's what you're doing, you're not a feminist. You're just channeling your hatred of women in a specific direction so you can pretend to yourselves you're still good people while also having an outlet for all your vile, weird, misogynistic feelings. No. Pick one. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Most of Vorsch's followers that decided to drop me a nice little message mentioned my accent, um, and also the fact that I should be quiet because I clearly had never experienced any of the everyday bad things most women go through. Firstly, as we've established, yes, I do know what it's like to not be able to afford food and worry I won't have a roof over my head. The confidence of your assumptions is remarkable. And secondly, why do you think it's reasonable to do that? Why would a wealthy woman not have as much right to talk about her experiences or opinions on femininity as anyone else? You don't get to strip them of their womanhood. You don't get to tell them how they should feel about their experiences. You don't get to tell them to shut up about what it means to be female. You don't get to do that. You don't get to take that from them. You don't get to try and remove the essence of what they are. Not to any woman of any background. Okay, if she's a woman, she's a woman. She can speak about what that's like, about what her understanding of femininity is. You're also kind of proving my point in how femininity is seen as weak and frivolous. In me making the argument that I think femininity is valuable, you all seem to see it as me saying women should float around in pretty dresses all day doing what we're told, and that the only reason I must be saying that is because life's been too easy for me. You utter misogynists. You think that's what femininity is? I don't think that's what femininity is. 
One of the most feminine people I knew was my grandmother. She was born into absolute, and I mean absolute poverty, grew up in an abusive home and clawed her way out of it. Her life was fucking hard and she was as tough as nails, a will of absolute iron, also the kindest woman in the world. Um, and she didn't need to beat people up in order to be strong or valuable, which really was what most of my argument boiled down to. There, is, there was nothing weak about her. Um, and what's not going to happen is you lot equating femininity with weakness or sneering at feminine women as being pathetic or telling women the only way they can be strong is to be more like men. Yeah, we're not doing that. And I think most women aren't on board with that, no matter how loudly you activists screech that they are. The disdain towards femininity from you lot was obvious. There was some very telling comment about how I think women shouldn't get their dainty little hands dirty with fighting. Um, I never said that. If women want to fight, they can fight. And as I've stated, I don't have a problem with female action heroes. My argument is that in general, women are, are not as good at fighting as men. Really not a very controversial statement. Open your eyes and look at the world. Um, and using that as the main metric of strength on which to judge someone is inherently misogynistic and ignores and devalues the strengths of most everyday women. My argument is that turning every female character into a badass fighter chick because apparently that's the only way to be strong is an insult towards most women. And that's not to say that the women who do fight don't have value because I, of course they do. Never said they don't. The fact you use that wording, get, don't get your dainty little hands dirty, yeah, kind of sounds like you're pretty disdainful of women who aren't like that, of more feminine women. Um, because it sounds to me like you hold masculinity in far higher regard. Thank you for demonstrating that. Also, I want to add that it also adds another whole new, even creepier dimension to his bizarre thing he's got with well-off women. The fact that he's from that kind of background, it just makes it very strange. I'm so tired of the Professor Flowers bullshit, but I especially fucking hate it when it comes from women, especially white upper middle class women. While she like eats roast pheasant off the back of like a slave that she bought and will be sacrificing later that evening, you know, okay, JK Rowling. And this, this upper middle class, like, British affect right here, this thing that she's doing. So it's okay for Vos it? it's okay for Vosch to be really successful and have loads of money. But he seems to have a problem with women who, who are in that position too. It's very strange. Mate, I'll be honest, I think your issues with women are really bloody deep-seated. I don't know what the hell's going on with you, but seriously, sort it out. It's bloody weird. for proving correct everything I said about you. I couldn't have done it better myself if I'd sat down and planned out an example of the type of male feminist that I was talking about. So bless you for that. Thank you for demonstrating that male feminists resent femininity and want to stamp it out wherever they find it. Thank you for demonstrating your complete disdain for it and disgust for it. There have always been men like this, only now they get to claim the label of feminist. Now they get to be applauded for it, just as long as they're doing it, the women deemed heretics. At least the bloody witch finders had the decency not to claim they were doing it all in the name of women's rights. I'm sorry, but you can't convince me that if Vorsch was born a few centuries earlier, that's not exactly the type of guy he would be. That's all I see when I look at him. Different labels, same men. She's wearing a fucking skirt with stockings. She just wants to live in Mad Men and be sexually harassed. Well, she was a whore anyway. Like, you know, like just the short skirt plus like the 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 stockings and the so on cloud the mind with unholy thoughts ah uh, she's a pick me no wonder she's dressed like this you really kind of have to think about what a whore is shut up bitch i see you Vorshi. i see your weakness and your cowardice and your anger towards women and your hatred of women i think most people see it and it's not pretty Vorsch be quieter and start apologising challenge. Well, thanks for watching everyone. Stay snazzy and look after yourselves. Yes, Vorsch, even you.